Okay, so now we're working on the fan. The fan, bought it on Amazon. Um, this is a uh, 80 millimeter fan to fit this particular bud device. I think it's the IPV115. All right, so we open it up. And basically what I'm looking for is an 80 millimeter 12 volt fan with a four pin connector. See that on the end there, it's a four pin connector and uh, Falcon uses it. Now you can just rig up a 12 volt fan that will run all the time, but the Falcon actually has a port on the board where you connect this and it will uh, speed up or slow down the fan based on what it needs. Um, okay, now people have opinions about airflow. I really don't care that much. Uh, I'm looking at this more from a pragmatic point of view. Let me get this slid in here. There we go. Um, I put this side of the fan facing out because this side is not going to get bound, is not going to bind. I put over here, something presses on it, that's going to bind the fan. It's going to make it so the blades don't spin freely. Um, I like to get fans that are quiet. It's just a personal preference. Um, because, you know, when you got a bunch of people in the, watching your show and it's in the yard, if your fans are super duper loud, that it can be distracting, right? And I know some of these fans, especially these um, these HP power supply fans, they can they sound like a jet engine taking off. All right, you get to watch me fumble around with this. My dexterity is not great. So these are little screws that come with the fan. I'm just gonna get those pre-turned. Let's see. I think fans are important. I think anytime you have electronics, you want to keep the things at a reasonable temperature. Now, I know a lot of people doing lights are in cold parts of the country where it's always cold outside. Here in Texas and in the south, it can be plenty warm outside during Christmas. It can certainly get warm inside a controller box. And plus, you know, Sometimes you want to use your controllers other times of the year, too. All right, so I got those pre-drilled, pre-screwed. So now I'm going to bring the this ring here. And this ring goes onto this as such. This part's on the inside. This part's on the outside. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's not like it's going to be holding super high loads. Alright, let's bring the bud box back. And so this guy goes on the outside. This guy we just mounted goes on the inside. And then we just give it a couple of spins. And we need at the end where it's not going to be getting in the way of the glands. Solar. To get the best way to test it, let me go find another Falcon controller. Okay. So I got another control here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect his fan right there. This is an F16 V3, but the fans used are the same. Okay. We'll pull the pin in right there. Go ahead and power it up. See? Ow! <laughs> yeah, so it, it's working. Let's turn that off. Okay. But it's a Redux 80 Nocturna NFR8 Redux 1800 PWM. And there's the back label. Four pin, which is the main thing, and it's a 80 by 80. All right, so now I'm gonna put in these guys. So this is my ethernet gland or my Cat 40, RJ45 
guy. All right, so I have the nut off. This is the nut. Again, there's a flat side and a round side. Flat side goes towards the wall of the device. Then I have this. So this one, I like to have my Cat5 ports so that this, the little notch, goes towards the bottom of the device. All right, so I come in underneath. I run it up through. And it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. That's okay. As long as I don't rip the threads off. And then the little cap I put here. The cap's important because if you're not using it, um, you don't want that connector to corrode. And then I put the nut on. I'm good at this, right? This is not my strength in the hobby. It's the stuff I've had to figure out. Okay. And get that reasonably tight. Again, we're not trying to turn this into a waterproof boat in a marine environment. Okay, so that one's in. Then I run this one up from underneath, from inside. There. Through the inside, as such. Right, so here we got our Ethernet. And I'm actually gonna, you can use, there's, there's multiple connections. I don't, I don't plumb the box for every possible RJ45 connector. So these could be used for ethernet, they could be used for receiver boards, it could be used for DMX, whatever, okay? Um, I typically don't use more than two. Usually I use one for DMX, I use one for RJ45. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna come in and they're gonna come into this surge protector, right? So this surge protector will be connected to ground. And then it will come into the box here or here. I forget. I gotta look it up. But it comes in the one side, and then I have my right angle Ethernet cable that will go from here to the Falcon. Okay. That way, if I get a lightning strike, uh, it doesn't blow out the Falcon. Okay. Now you say lightning strike does it? It, it would send you know a surge over the power, not over the Ethernet. Normally that's true, but if the lightning strike is close enough, the, the electromagnetic pulse will travel over those uh, RJ45 cables, which typically are longer run cables, and it does cause damage. And I lost a whole bunch of equipment last year because of it, which is one of the reasons I'm doing controller builds this year. So anyway, so now we got the box plumb. Here you can see all the holes that we're gonna use for the pigtails. We're using six of them. Um, each board has you know two banks of eight, and so, yeah, that'll be our, our 48 connectors. So now I think uh, probably the next step is uh, start breaking out the JDation stuff and start uh, mounting stuff to, to the uh, to the plates.